the environment for AIDS is changing. Brooklyn is the epicenter of the epicenter. New York City is the epicenter. We have more uh, cases of HIV and AIDS than Miami, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. combined. Right now, it's time to end AIDS. It's time to do a campaign like they've never seen. This meeting today is about you, because you are the leadership of HIV prevention and care in Brooklyn. Our whole objective here is to find ways to improve finding people with HIV and linking them to care. I can't tell you how excited I am to have the chance to hear about the groundbreaking work of the coalition and some of the innovative methodology uh, for intervening in the HIV AIDS epidemic in Brooklyn. So today we're going to share with one another um, the most recent policies, best practices, um, data and research that have emerged. It's a concept, and I'll put it in quotes for the moment, called the, the Safer Sex Party. HIV-positive youth organizing within their social networks to invite people to come to an event where HIV testing is offered, free and confidential. But we're making testing a normative behavior among youth. We're making it fun. It's, it's, it's disguised as a party. What we're doing is saying, okay, you're using the bathhouse. If you'd like an HIV test, you can get an HIV test right at the bathhouse. And if you need care, we can offer you a seamless transition to an appointment for care right at the bathhouse. Everything that affects us as gay men is mental health related. It just, you know, I don't care what anyone says, if it's homelessness, if it's homophobia, everything is mental health related. And so one of the issues that we address at GMAT, Gay Men of African Descent, where I'm the executive director of, is we have a mental health program. You know, we do, and it's the only funded program in the state of New York for black gay men. ESAP allows people who register to the program to furnish or sell syringes to people 18 years or old. I wanted to be, to, to see if we could expand the program and trying to see if we can go to other places. And that's how the SAPI start growing up and they start talking about sharing resources, sharing uh, uh, medical provider sharing vans. We have been able to get to areas that have not been able to get before. I encourage you to keep academia at the table, to keep research at the table. Let's use data to inform our programs and not do it on an emotional basis. Uh, our mayor says, in God we trust, everyone else bring data. RDS refers to respondent-driven sampling. It's been used in all kinds of things, and its major strength is that it uh, is able to reach hard-to-reach populations through peer, peer referral. You can't just call people on the phone and say, uh, yes, can I speak to uh, the person in the house who's a heroin user? No, who says yes, right? And basically what it is, is you pay for an interview and you issue the, everyone who comes in three referral coupons that they can give to members of their social network. And anyone who comes in with one of those coupons, the person who referred them, you could tell by the numbers, uh, it gets a, it gets a referral fee. It's a pyramid scheme, essentially. I mean, this is the idea, right? It drives out in ever wider kinds of waves. The importance of this is that um, the referral fees, while they can sound like real money, compared to paying someone to do outreach is actually e extraordinarily small. We had two initiatives. One was the RDS project, and the other was the um, data collection. Of the 34 agencies with contracts to do HIV counseling and testing in Brooklyn, we managed to get data from 32. That's 94%. We have now um, documented the testing of 97,531 individuals in Brooklyn in the year 
We no longer have the luxury of being isolated. More and more, as I interact with uh, people who are interested in funding organizations that work in the community, they want to see how you've critically examined what you are doing. We, as community-based agencies, need to be legitimized. And the only place that we can be legitimized is through academia. Most people talk about collaborations and um, the idea is more like a memorandum of understanding. I'm gonna do this, you're gonna do that. This was much deeper than that. This was, uh, you know, I'm gonna share my resources with you, the ones that you don't have so that you can succeed. I need you to share some of your resources with me, some of your knowledge, some of your staff, some of your money. And when we had this initial Blick meeting, I said, Chris, people aren't ready to make those types of collaborations. And uh, Chris proved me wrong. The policies that were made 20 years ago when you only had to report AIDS because there was nothing to do except make the diagnosis and count the bodies the times have changed. HIV AIDS is now a chronic disease if people get tested early and linked to care. Therefore, we should be doing all we can to get people tested and get them linked to care, which is why we need to make HIV testing a routine part of medical care. So there are many different things that I think we have to be doing in our communities. But the most important thing that I think Brooklyn has so very right is all of us have to be in the room together. All of us have to be struggling together. We need younger people coming in all the time with the great energy, and we need the older people staying the course until we finally, finally have all of the solutions that we need in HIV and AIDS. I continue to be in this fight, and I'm going to be in this fight as long as I have breath in my body. We must continue the fight to end AIDS, but we've got to do it together.